It's important. We all know that the 2020 census or the decennial census every decade is about power and it's about money. We talk about power, it's about congressional representation, legislative boundaries that are redrawn, uh, business decisions that are made when it comes to investing, jobs and services, um, those public funds that trickle down to the local communities. We have estimated that more than $675 billion every year in federal funds actually flows down to local levels. One of the things that we discovered is that black families, they can be different. Uh, people of different cues, uh, people of different ages in the household. Um, there's a diverseness and there's a richness, and that richness wants to be captured. People want to tell their story, their story. Um, and so this is our way of acknowledging, recognizing, celebrating the diversity in black households as they exist today, really as they've always existed, but bringing them into the light and giving them a sense of wanting to be a part of census participation. We will make every effort to count everyone once and only once and in the right place. The online questionnaire is available in 13 languages, including French and Haitian Creole. Our call center will also have operators available to provide assistance in these languages. So these 13 languages represent the languages spoken in 95% of the households across the country. And then additionally, we have language assistant guides that can be found on YouTube as videos and on our website in 59 other languages. Advertising. Advertising is a wonderful thing. You can do a lot with advertising, but you can only say so much in a 30 second ad or in a one page uh, uh, ad in a newspaper. There's only so much. And because it's only so much, we have to have our partner organizations and our partnership staff that can provide you that on the ground, face-to-face, in-depth information. They can talk to you and give you more details around what you hear. Advertising is the umbrella. We're the air cover so that you know what we're talking about and that you're more interested to find more about it. I work on behalf of the, the district government across all of our agencies and our partners. Um, we know how critical a full count is to D.C. Accurate census data ensures that we've been getting about $6 billion every single year in federal dollars. And these dollars support vital programs that impact every resident in the district, but they especially impact some of our most vulnerable populations. That $6 billion is, is funding uh, things such as Medicare, uh, Medicaid, our school fundings. Our schools alone are getting close to $250 million a year in federal allocation. And that really impacts our communities through Head Start programming, school lunch and breakfast programming, Title I dollars, special education, technology for our classrooms. These have real impacts every single day in the district. Our DC State Data Center estimated that an undercount in 2010 uh, resulted in an annual loss of $57 million every year to the district, so about $570 million between 10, 2010 and 2020 that we lost. We know every person counts. Every person that's undercounted is money that we're leaving on the table that we are entitled to in the district. So what to expect in the mail? The invitation will go out in the form of a letter, which will include instructions for responding online, and a phone number to call if someone needs help, or perhaps the person prefers to give their responses over the phone. Our call center will be there to collect that information. Of course, there will be segments of the population who will receive the questionnaire as well as the invitation to respond online in the very first mailing. When we talk about SAFE, we're talking about the safeguards that we take to ensure that the responses are kept confidential and they aren't shared with anyone. No other law enforcement agencies, um, including local police. Um, all Census Bureau employees take a lifetime oath to not disclose that personally identifiable information. And you'll see there that there are penalties for that, um, up to $250,000 and up to five years in prison. So the questionnaire contains only a few simple questions, such as the number of people in the household, about each person living in the household, as well as their relationship to the person who identifies himself or herself as person one. And that's just a few. These questions allow the Census Bureau to develop data about families, households, as well as other groups. 
And let me just say right now so that we are clear, there is no question on the form related to citizenship. Self-identification of, of race and origin. So the self-identification question reflects the most recent revisions to the standards for the classification of federal data on race and ethnicity. So we asked respondents to respond or answer both the question about Hispanic origin and the question about race. And origin can be viewed as the heritage, nationality, lineage, or the country of birth. And since 2000, the census questionnaire has allowed individuals to self-identify with more than one race. So the responses to these questions help create statistics about the different ethnic groups. And the data collected in these questions are needed by federal agencies to monitor compliance with anti-discrimination provisions under the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. 